Hello everyone, this is AJ and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel, whether you're a returning viewer or a brand new viewer. Yeah, so welcome to episode two of my comic book retro reviews. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the movie Barb Wire, the Pamela Anderson film. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is episode two, like I said, of a series of videos where I'm taking a look at comic book movies from the past. The comic book movies before the era that we're being spoilt with now, with the MCU and the DCEU, or whatever you may want to call that, and the, the wealth of content that we're getting given to us on TV, through the CW, HBO Max, and all over the place. It's just comic book characters wherever you look. But it wasn't all that, always that way. You go back to the 90s and before, and this sort of thing, and Hollywood didn't take this sort of stuff seriously, and I'm looking at those films, those films where audiences didn't really flock to see them, where, where they just couldn't get off the ground and do anything right. Um, these sort of films are sort of forgotten now. Now in episode one of this series I took a look at the 1990 Captain America film. Yeah the Captain America film before the Chris Evans stuff that we're getting now. Um, so if you feel like going and checking that video out I'll leave a link in the description below directly to that video so you can go and see it. Fantastic. So yeah so barbed wire. Now Barbed wire, obviously Pam Anderson vehicle. Um, now this is a comic book character that was um, introduced in the year of 1993 in Comics Greatest World Still Harbour, which was an imprint of Dark Horse Comics. Um, they've done this sort of 12 issue weekly series that introduced different characters to this world of Still Harbour. Now this wasn't set in a future like the movie. It was all sort of set in the future, but on an alternate Earth where there were other superpower beings and this sort of thing. Um, and these aliens and, and, and nonsense like that. So there is that sort of difference. Now, after that, in 1994, the character got a nine issue series. Um, it went run from 94 to 95, like I said, with nine issues. And then in 96, we got a four issue miniseries as well, um, to sort of coincide with the release of the film. The, the comic book wouldn't again, or the character wouldn't again see print until about 2015 with an eight issue miniseries. So this character hasn't been very big in comics whatsoever. You know, you can count the amount of issues that she's been in on your fingers and toes. It's not a lot. Um, unfortunately for the character now this film yes yeah, so this film came out in the year of 1996 here in the UK we got it released in the cinemas on May the 3rd of that year with a 15 rating and a runtime of one hour and 38 minutes and was directed by a gentleman named David Hogan now David Hogan has, has directed a wealth of um, written and directed a wealth of music videos and this sort of a thing um, and he's worked as a second unit director on Batman Forever in 1995 the year before which is probably what led to him being given the role of director on this movie he was cheap basically now this film had a budget of nine million dollars so pretty cheap in itself um, the film um, was based on a story and screenplay by Eileen Chaikin and Chuck Bafara. Um, I don't know anything else that they've written or anything, anything like that. The film obviously starred Pamela Anderson in the title role of, of Barb Wire. Um, Xander Berkeley as Alexander Willis. Um, Udo Kerr played a character called Curly, who was essentially Barb Wire's Alfred, shall we say. Um, he run this bar with her. Um, and... Tamara Morrison as um, Axel, who we've seen more recently in things like um, um, Boba Fett. He plays Boba Fett. That's what you'll know him from, but he's been in a wealth of other stuff before that. Obviously, he was in the Star Wars prequel films as the clones. He's voiced in the animated series Clone Wars, that sort of a thing. You know, he was in Aquaman. You know, he's quite a well-known, established actor in his own right, um, as they all are. Um... Now, this film is set in the distant future of 2017. Yes, past for us, but the future for the film, because the film was 
um, released in 1996. So 21 years seemed some distance off. But that time's passed and gone now, which always leaves me to believe films should always say in the not too distant future, as opposed to giving it a specific era or year, because you get to that in no time whatsoever. So, like I said, this is set in, in um, the city of S Still Harbor, which is the sort of last free zone in America. There's another American Civil War going on. Uh, the country's divided and split, and you've got this sort of um, a sort of German regime police force running things and. Do you know what I mean? Dispatching of people, not a very nice place, just crime ridden and all this sort of thing. As I said, um, Barb Wire herself, she runs a bar. Um, and this bar is, anyone can go to it, it's a free haven, you know, no matter what side you're on. Um, but on the side, she's a bounty hunter, all right? And her ex-lover Axel comes along with his new wife and they've got to get across the border into Canada and they want her help doing it and um, there's a resistance um there's a resistance group as well that um she may or may not have something to do with or have ties to and this sort of thing and there's a MacGuffin of these like um silly contact lenses and this sort of thing the germans they're not germans but you know what i mean the nazi party type of police officers want to put it to a stop sander berkeley plays a police officer in steel harbor who's um he's he's one of them shades of gray type of police officers he's he's shifty does things for his own means takes bribes and this sort of thing but he's not a bad guy do you know what i mean all that sort of nonsense going on now I did watch this on Blu-ray, yeah. Um, I've actually got four copies of it on Blu-ray. Um, I've shown these before. Basically, I've got this one here, which is the UK release. I've got a US release that I got imported because the UK didn't have one. But it's got completely different cover art, um, and I quite like the UK cover art, so I got that cheap at one point. And then I've got two versions from Germany, a steelbook version, um and a digibook version limited to like 500 pieces yeah so say what you will about that now the first thing i will say right is i was shocked when i put this in i put this film in right i'm watching on a 75 inch tv um and i was shocked at how clear this picture is this film looked better than some 4ks that i've seen i i'm not lying to you it was that crisp and clear it looked astounding. Um, I can't get over how fantastic this film looked on Blu-ray. Um, yes, I have seen it before on a smaller scale TV, this sort of thing. Um, but I haven't watched it for some years. Anyway, enough about the, the picture quality, which was spot on, anyway, about the film. Um, so, this film isn't to be taken seriously. Let's, let's put it that way, right? Um, Obviously, Pamela Anderson as Barb Wire. Um, we're introduced to her at the beginning in a, a a rather sort of soft porn style sequence in which she's dancing, being sprayed with water. Her breasts are hanging out, you know, and, and a lot of the clothing that she wears through the majority of this film is scantily clad, shows a lot of cleavage, shows a lot of leg, this sort of a thing. Um, yeah, um, now, it was an odd time, right? Because like I said, this, this film was made by Dark Horse Comics. And at the time, in those mid-90s, Dark Horse Comics were getting some of their films off of the ground, some of their characters into films. The Mask with Jim Carrey, yes, that was a... a um, early 90s that was but that was a dark horse property time cop starring jean-claude van damme believe it or not that is based on a comic book again by dark horse comics um now this was a kind of no-brainer to do to bring to the screen because the character of barb wire in the comics looked like pamela anderson it looked like it you'd used pamela anderson as its point of reference um and thusly getting pamela anderson into the role was spot on perfect casting. Okay, Pam Anderson isn't a fantastic actress, right? But she carries this film well enough. Now I know that this film gets a lot of hate and, and people don't like it, but I'll tell you what, after how many years? It's been 96, 20, nearly 30 years, right? 25 to 30 years, this film stands up pretty good. I mean, it looks pretty good. Um, 
some of the action in it is pretty good. A lot of special effects and explosions are pretty good. There's one dodgy bit of special effect at the end where something's falling. But beyond that, the film doesn't look bad. Um, the problem revolves around the story more than anything else. The story kind of drags towards the centre part. And, um, yeah, it's... It's hard to keep your interest if you're not interested, I get that. But for me, uh, being aware of the character, I was aware, I'd, I'd read um, uh, barbed wire comics prior to this film coming out. Not because the film was coming out, but because I was a comic collector, and I am a comic collector. And um, when Dark Horse released their world's greatest comics, Still Harbour, um, I, I got them all and read them all. Um, she wasn't my favourite character from it. You had a character called X, who was very good, and a character called Ghost. Um, and I think she was the most popular character out of the entire run, with X probably coming a close second and Barbed Wire third. But she was easy to bring to the screen um, because you just need a dystopian-style future and away you go. Um, you know, Xander Berkeley is, is enjoyable to watch in the film. Um, Udo Kerr in the small bits that he's got, he's very good. And Tamara Morrison is him, his normal self. Um, it's difficult to watch it now without um, thinking he'll turn around and say, like a bantha, and give it his, you know, bike bit from The Mandalorian. You know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, but, you know, the film's editing is pretty poor. Um... It's very annoying in the first sort of quarter of the film in that between scenes it's just a fade to black, a fade to black. And it, it feels like you're going into an advert break. I'm expecting adverts to pop up like on TV. Um, but that kind of settles down towards the second half. There's editing problems later on in the film in a, in a sequence where these, um, you know, dystopian kind of Nazi police officers are, are battering down her, her you know, her bar um in that she stood there with a backdrop of a wall behind her with glass bottles they get smashed a couple of times and they're still standing and she goes off and rescues her blind brother only to then be stood back in that same position um watching what's going on um because it's been edited in that poor manner um but you know for me this this isn't a bad film it's not as bad as what people make out um i can have a lot of fun with it i can enjoy it like i said uh, pamela anderson isn't taking herself seriously in the role you can tell that she realizes that she's in this 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 um property that you shouldn't take seriously and uh, for that it's, it's an enjoyable movie. Um, yeah, so this film, like I said, it had a budget of $9 million and went on to fail at the box office uh, at, um, and top at $3,794,000, give or take. Um, so it didn't do particularly well at all. Now, let's get into a little bit of trivia regarding this film. Okay, so the wet strip scene at the beginning that I've spoke about previously where Pamela Anderson's dancing around being sprayed by water. This had an extended version added to it when it hit DVD. I do actually remember that. Or was it VA? Would it have been DVD or would it have been VHS at the time? I can't remember. 96. Um, regardless, um, it had an extended sequence added to that. But this whole... This whole um, scene the director was under pressure for nudity to put into the film um, and Pamela Anderson came up with the idea for the, the wet strip um, based upon a nightmare that she'd had where she was doing a, some dirty dancing dirty sort of dancing while being sprayed with champagne I don't see how that constitutes as a nightmare um, not in my book anyway um, and even from her perspective, I don't see how she can say that was a nightmare. I'm sure she was more than happy to get paid to do something like that. Um, now, obviously, another thing is that this film shares a lot of similarities to 1992's Casablanca, even with the end of her ex-lover getting on the plane and her having to say, do you know what I mean? There's a lot, a lot of similarities. Um, the original comic book actually ended its run after the disappointing um, reception to this movie. 
it made Dark Horse Comics reevaluate the character and basically knock it on the head for a, con a considerable amount of time. Now, Bob Wire's um, catchphrase within this film is "Don't call me babe." Um, now that is straight out of the comics, and the reason for this is because there was another comic um, created by um, a quite character, comic character created by John Byrne, who was a big creator in the eighties, um, and he'd created a character called Babe, who Bob Wire shared a lot of similarities with her. She was rather buxom as well. Um, so Bob Wire saying "Don't call me Babe" isn't in a reference to people calling her Babe in that sense. It's in reference to this John Byrne character itself. Um, yeah, so there you go. Just a few little bits of trivia about the film. So yeah, so in conclusion. It's a film that I can watch and that I can enjoy. Um, no, it's not a particularly good film. I know that, and when I watch it, I see that. But regardless, it's not a bad film. Um, it's enjoyable enough. I can put it on every few years and watch it. It's stupid, it's silly. Um, yeah, it's just one of those you know, throwaway sort of superhero films from that era. Um, it's no worse than other stuff that came out around that time. Um, Pamela Anderson is suited 100% to the role. Um, no one else could do the role any more justice than what she could, especially at that time. But unfortunately, like I said, the film did flop. And a lot of that was because Pamela Anderson, obviously Baywatch and this sort of a thing, and Baywatch was on reruns and all that. And I don't think people wanted to pay money to go and see Pamela Anderson doing what Pamela Anderson does when they can just switch on the telly and get the same sort of vibe out of watching her running around on the beach in a red skimpy swimsuit. That's pretty much it. Anyway, so yeah, so that's my talk about barbed wire. Um, and like I said, in a few weeks' time, or in two weeks, something like that, week and a half, I don't know when it'll be, because these and these episodes are not weekly or anything like that. They'll drop ad hoc. Um, but yeah, so hit the subscribe button, um, come back and join me on episode three. I don't know what I'm going to be doing yet, what comic book movie I'm going to be doing from that sort of era. If you have any ideas of a, of a comic book movie you'd like me to take a look at and give my thoughts on from that sort of era, the stuff that came before, whether you consider it to be good, bad, whatever, I'm happy to take a look. I'm happy to give you my thoughts on it. Let me know that in the comments down below. Um, what film you would particularly like me to take a look at and I'll fit it into my listing um, sometime soon. Um, obviously by the time you're watching this I've probably done episode three so it won't be before that but it could be just after that. Um, anyway so yeah subscribe button, notification bell, comment, you know what to do. This is AJ. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all on the next one. Take care all and goodbye.